Shake it in. <laughs> there you go. Wipe out. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's happening? Well, people aren't watching television as much these days. No, that's, I mean, in terms of traditional television, cable and whatnot. Have you ever had satellite television? I had when I was in high school. Okay, yeah, same. One of my least favorite things about satellite television or, or cable is you don't get to pick exactly what you want. You got to take these packages and most of the time you've got channels you don't ever watch and you're spending like 80 bucks a month by the end of it. And to, and why? Why would you ever do that when you could just go to YouTube and search up Media Minute? Media Minute, yeah. that's right. <laughs> but Don't there are other to, videos. There are other <laughs> videos. But before we talk about those other videos, be sure to like this video. Be sure to subscribe and smash that bell. Because if you don't, you'll never see us again. <laughs> um, welcome back to Media Minute. Um, why did I say that? Yes. <clears throat> so <laughs> YouTube, you, there's all sorts of really cool channels that aren't... Let me, let me just, let me just figure out what the hell we're doing here. Talking about cable. All right. Okay. So yeah, once you're done watching this video, there's a couple of other places you might want to subscribe to. Get some learning in your life with PBS Space Time. Dr. Matt O'Dowd is such a wonderful host. You, you'll almost feel like you're watching uh, an intellectual media minute. He's that good. Um, he'll talk to, he talks about futurism and space exploration and Penrose diagrams. Even though, do you know what a Penrose diagram is? I have no idea. It's, it's like a diamond and it plots, um, you see, when you're, the cool thing about a Penrose diagram is it shows you what your observable universe is relative to where you are. And so you got like these, these time, these like line, like light lines. It, uh, I couldn't do it justice. I'm not a doctor. No. But like, Matt O'Dowd. He's a doctor. He's a doctor. Of time and or space. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Learn about some astrophysics. And once you're done learning about astrophysics, go check out NPR music. Music is really hard to get these days, at least live music. And I tell you, these guys do such an excellent job of presenting a live music that you'll swear you were there. And if you had, do you have VR, a VR headset? I do not. Yeah, me neither. Those things are freaking expensive. Yeah. Um, that's a topic for another time though. Actually, let's just sidetrack for a second here. If you had to choose, would you pick the Vive or the Oculus? Uh, I think I might lean towards the Vive. I have a problem with the Vive. Yeah. The Smec... Well, it's been a while. They used to have symmetrical controllers. I don't know if that's changed. Yeah, I'm, I'm not up on the latest. I'm too poor. <laughs> yeah, too poor. I feel that. Yeah, NPR music, though. The sound team is incredible. You can watch Chick Korea. He's, uh, he's a pianist. I definitely recommend checking him out. So he said Chick filming. Pianist. Chick Pianist. Incredible, incredible analogy. He's actually a dude. Okay. <laughs> oh, Snark Puppy though also is is, uh, is something to check out. They're they're basically what ha it's it Snark Puppy is what happens when you take a prodigy and you mix him up with a bunch of pros. You get such an incredible musical experience, something that is unforgettable and out of this world. Yeah, so go check out NPR Music. That's what I'm just trying to say. Have you ever wondered how to appreciate music without intaking substances? I have. Well, if you learned about music theory, you could have a deeper understanding and appreciation for it. And to do that, I definitely recommend Adam Neely. <clears throat> 
But I know, I know learning can be intimidating. He's got more than educational content on his channel. He's got his gig vlog where he documents his experiences as a professional musician in the New York area. Definitely interesting to, to look at. One time he got a gig and he had to learn the entire set on the taxi ride there. I couldn't even, I can't even read music, <laughs> let alone like fathom what it would be like to learn an entire set on the, on the taxi ride there. Um, but yeah, once you're done learning about what it's like to play music in New York, you can check out his, his Q and A's. Those are really condensed educational videos, essentially. And, um, so you would say he's a musician of note. <laughs> he is a musician of note. Um, yeah. And once you're done learning music, all, all there is to learn about music theory with Adam Neely, you can go check out my analog journals. Some people say that vinyl has a special sound to it. I personally prefer MP3. How, what about you? Uh, well, I know that vinyl has kind of had a resurgence. You actually see a lot of, uh, video game soundtracks coming out on vinyl now. You know why? I've got a theory. Well, more like a hypothesis. People want to support artists, and I appreciate that. And sometimes buying digital copies, it's very, it's not very tangible. It's not very, you can't get your hands on it. So it's really just nice to have something physical to represent your contribution. You know how many people I know who own vinyl, but they have absolutely no way of playing it? Six. S you are an absolute mind reader. <laughs> Am I right? You're right. <laughs> wow, that was a good guess. Yeah, wow, incredible. Yeah, um, you can get all those pops and crackles on my analog journal, and you can learn about music from around the world. It's kind of intimidating at first, especially considering he's got sets like the Brazilian uh, Hour, he's got 80s Japanese pop sets, but I, th I really do feel like the most accessible one is the CBS Brazilian Grooves vinyl set. Excellent. And finally, did you, do you ever watch the Joe Rogan podcast? Once in a while, yeah. Yeah, he's on Spotify now, apparently. Yes, he is, yeah. There's been some controversy there. People think that he's going to get censored. Yep. Um, they kind of tried. Not not, not the top level of Spotify, but kind of like some grunts. At least that's the way it's been described to me. If you like Joe Rogan, you might actually like Lex Friedman. He's got a podcast. It's kind of like an intel a more intellectual Joe Rogan. Um. He's also, he also has a clips YouTube. Um, ain't nobody got, well, I say ain't nobody got time for a three hour show. Some people do. I personally have ADHD. <laughs> so it's really nice to be able to digest the show in chunks. Yeah. So he's got it uh, sorted by question because he, he does, he conducts interviews. He tends to ask incredibly smart people what the meaning of life is and, um, all sorts of really deep questions, a lot of philosophy in there, a lot of um, science and mathematics. Um, definitely start with either like Alex Filipenko or Roger Penrose. Yeah, he actually has um, Sir Roger Penrose on his podcast. The guy who made the Penrose diagram. Oh, bringing it back to the start. <laughs> That's right. Um, and if you're a programmer... Definitely check out his lectures on artificial intelligence. He's actually done lectures at MIT because that's where he hails from. That's where he graduated. Um, and finally, thanks for your viewership. We really appreciate having you come back to this channel every single time you see us in your feed. So keep it up. But that's all I got. All right. We're going to be back after this break, and I'm going to tell you about some video game news.
Welcome back to Media Minute. My name's Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Michael's going to give us some video game news. All right. So, starting things off, who do you think the kind of the mascot of PlayStation is? I used to think it was Crash Bandicoot, but I think that's changed. Wait, okay, it was Crash Bandicoot, and then it was that... Who's that knit, knitted, like... Sackboy. Sackboy. And that's exactly who we're going to talk about right now. All right. I yeah. love Sackboy. Well, the PlayStation 5 is out now. And uh, with that, you have Sackboy, colon, a big adventure from Sumo Digital. Of course, Sackboy is back for a new generation of consoles. You have an epic 3D adventure, which you can do solo or with your friends on multiplayer. And basically, if you like the old Little Big Planet games with Sackboy... Mm. Uh, You'll probably like this one. It's a nice family game as well that you can play with the kids. It's, you know, mostly a platformer and, you know, it's got like a nice aesthetic that anyone can pick up and play. It's doing really well. 78 so far on Metacritic. Okay. 78, not bad. Platformers. Yep. Good for the whole family. For sure. For sure. And I think that has like four player multiplayer too. So, you know, you can play with a couple of kids if you got them. Uh, next up, we have uh, Planet Coaster, the console edition. Recently came out by uh, Frontier Developments. It's on most major platforms. You get to manage and build your very own theme park in this simulation game. Wow. Of course, it's been out on PC for a few years, but they're finally bringing it over to a console. You get to save and upload your designs to the interwebs. And if you like building and management games and you've ever dreamed about running your very own theme park, you're probably going to like this one. 83 on Metacritic and, of course... If you want to, you can recreate Mr. Bones' Wild Ride. I love those kinds of games. I remember when I first got Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 in the cereal box. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people had that version. Yeah, it's. I've, I think I've spent probably 400 hours playing that game. Yeah. Such an incredible game. And then when it got to Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, it kind of started getting a little bit too heavy for the, uh, for the PCs at the time. So it's really nice to finally see a high quality roller coaster tycoon type game for the console. Yeah, uh, yeah. Planet Coaster has definitely kind of taken up that mantle that uh, roller coaster tycoon used to have. Next up, uh, I mean, we've been talking about like a lot of remakes recently. This one's uh, been made for the PS5. It's a uh, Demon Souls from Japan Studio, and of course, the very first Souls game, even before Dark Souls, was Demon Souls. It's been made for a uh, remade for a new generation. With the summoning of the old one, a colorless fog swept across the land, unleashing nightmarish creatures with a hunger for human souls. As a lone warrior must brave a land beyond the fog to earn the title of Slayer of Demons. And a lot of people really dig in this 93 on Metacritic. I actually had that for the PS3. Uh, Never got very far because I have no time to get good. Yeah. Is it a FromSoft game? Yep. Wow. Yeah, that was their first Souls title. You know what else was a FromSoft game? What? Armored Core. Yeah. Definitely also a game you should check out. Okay. So what happens when you combine Disney and Final Fantasy? What do you get? You get Kingdom Hearts. What happens when you combine Kingdom Hearts with a rhythm game? He's broken again. He got Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory from Square Enix. It said for the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Of course, it match, matches what? up Kingdom Hearts with a rhythm game. You have, what? yeah, 20 plus characters and 140 music tracks from collected from all the series. Uh, you get to play familiar faces as well as, uh, you know, Disney uh, guest characters. And it's the game that you need to pick up and play whenever you feel like you need to play as Goofy <laughs> and lay the smack down <laughs> on someone. It's uh, 77 with Metacritic right now. So how does it work? It's a rhythm game with the Kingdom Hearts characters. You run along like it looks like a fretboard and you attack enemies. Okay. The, uh, I was ready to bring out the DDR, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this one's doing good. 77 Metacritic. And uh, finally, uh, the latest Call of Duty has come out. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Uh, for all major platforms. Uh, travel way, way back to the 1980s. And battle around the globe in iconic locations such as East Berlin, Vietnam, Turkey, and the KGB headquarters. Oh, that's cool. And, of course, no one really cares about the single-player stuff for Call of Duty, so let's talk about the multiplayer stuff, because zombies are back. Oh, yeah. Apparently, they've been gone for a couple of years. I, I don't really follow Call of Duty now. But, yeah, zombies are back. Uh, the Warzone 
game state is back. Doing really good. 84 on Metacritic with reviewers. I checked on the user score of this okay. one, though. User scores are rated out of 10, 3.9. Okay, see, I'm not surprised about that. Yeah. Oh, man, it's absurd to me that they continue. I understand it's uh, one of those franchises that are so important to gamers for some reason. But it, it almost feels like it. it's like Call of Duty, Black Ops 5, Modern Warfare 3, you know. Like, in space. In space, yeah. So at least they have zombies. That's all I can say about that. Zombies and Reagan. I don't know if they have zombie Reagan. Oh, man. They better have zombie Reagan. <laughs> that's probably, you know what? It does, you know, I'm going to make a bet right now. It doesn't have zombie Reagan, and that's why it has such a low score. A low user score, yeah. Yeah. Could be. I'm still playing Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 1. Yeah, I have you, you know what? In Modern Warfare 3, they had a single player kind of mode. It was like you know, multiplayer on, offline as well and online, but it was against bots. Yep. That's, that's my style. I'm not not an online player. No, I got you... a really low elo. <laughs> That's like me. I'm uh, in in terms of how I play Call of Duty. I'm one of those people that a lot of people hate. I get a lot of kills, but I die a lot as well. So yeah, I remember back in Modern Warfare Two, I knew a guy who was unbelievable. That was back when quick scoping was was a thing. And it's funny too because quick scoping actually requires skill. It, it wasn't easier. But people got so mad at quick scopers because they thought that it was they were like exploiting the game yeah. that they made the zoom in on the scope longer, which <laughs> all the quick scopers, every like all the high level players know that quick scopers if if you get them to use an AR you're gonna lose harder, it's gonna be worse on you. So you did this to yourselves, guys. <laughs> Well, that uh, wraps things up for me. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Media Minute. As Jesse said earlier, if you like what you saw, hit that like button and make sure you hit that bell to get some notifications. Take care.